This morning, a senior Russian official says Russia may be forced to use a nuclear weapon if Ukraine's counteroffensive operation is successful. His comments after come after a drone hit a Russian shopping center in Moscow overnight. We've got some video of that attack. You can see an explosion uh, really on the streets of Moscow. There are no word if anyone was injured in that attack. Um, just yesterday, the Ukrainian president Vladimir Zelensky said the war is gradually returning to Russia's territory, although we should say they did not claim direct responsibility for that drone attack in Moscow. I'm joined now by former CIA director and CENTCOM commander General David Petraeus. General, I'll get back to the, the nuclear threat in just a moment, but first, you know, these drone attacks that are taking place on Russian soil, the Ukrainians don't claim responsibility for all them, but what's the strategic gain, if any, that the Ukrainians get from this? John, I think that the objective here is to, again, bring the war to the Russian people, uh, particularly those in Moscow. Uh, these are presumably Ukrainian-produced drones. Uh, they are targeting, according to individuals with whom I spoke, in fact, seven weeks ago uh, in Kyiv, uh, legitimate military targets, although they don't always end up hitting those, of course, because the air defense can deflect them. But I think these, similar to those Russian ethnic uh, forces that were operating from Ukraine into Russia, uh, the Legion and so forth, what they're trying to do is, again, to acquaint the Russian people with the fact that a war is going on, uh, that it can have an impact on them, ideally that it's not going well for the Russians on the battlefield on Ukraine, and also to distract them to a degree, to require them to use assets to protect their own soil, uh, their own ministries of defense and so forth uh, that can't be used, therefore, on the battlefield in Ukraine. General, what's your assessment of how the counteroffensive is going in general? At the end of last week, the Ukrainians were claiming success uh, on the southern front. Staromoyorsk is, is a town, a small city, that they retook, which was Russian custody or Russian hands, for more than a year. What more do you think the Ukrainians need to be doing along this front? I think they need to be doing what they actually are now doing, um, having adapted their plan. Of course, no plan survives contact with the enemy. And it was quickly clear that these miles long minefields, anti-personnel, anti-tank minefields, uh, tank ditches, dragon's teeth, trench lines full of Russian soldiers all overwatched by forward observers and drones with artillery on call, that these are going to be very, very difficult to breach, given the shortcomings that the Ukrainians have in certain assets that we would have deployed in this kind of situation, in particular, massive air power. We would have just carpet bombed the whole uh, area of these minefields, tried to blow up as much as we possibly could. And then very substantial, heavily armed, uh, essentially bulldozers, D9 uh, bulldozers that just plow their way through this, supported again by close air support, attack helicopters and the rest. They don't have that. So they've adapted, I think, impressively. Uh, now, their achievements have been pretty modest. They've certainly uh, cleared, liberated over 100 square miles. That's not much, although it is more uh, in the first seven weeks of this offensive than the Russians achieved in the previous seven months of their fall and winter offensive. But what they're doing now, I think, is described well by the chief of defense staff of the UK, who has described this as starve, stretch, and strike. So they starve you a trip, the Russian headquarters, their artillery units, their reserve force uh, that are waiting to be deployed, their ammo and fuel storage locations, and the lines of communication uh, from Crimea to Russia and Crimea uh, to Ukraine. You do this all across the front, across a 600-mile front. By the way, that's 150 miles more than the distance from Kuwait to Baghdad for, for that invasion. Um, and you stretch those forces. You keep Russians deployed everywhere. And then once you've set the conditions by this attrition, once you've picked your way through the minefields with sappers, uh, engineers, and so forth, and you have an opportunity, you then press forward with these uh, tanks and infantry fighting vehicles provided by the West. But again, they're not going to be able to really bring to bear the combined arms operations capabilities that they now do have. Uh, until they can get a breakthrough and force the Russians to start to move to respond to them when they can break out into the open. And it's very hard to say 
when that might be. Indeed, I think one of the critical elements in what will determine the success of this offensive, which will be a fall as well as summer offensive for Ukraine, they have to achieve significant progress and they know it. I think the key is going to be whether Russian forces can hold up. They've been in the line for over a year. They're not rotating forces the way the Ukrainians are. They're not that well looked after. And will they crack? Might they crumble? Might it be more than just local? That I think is going to be a, a very important factor in whether the Ukrainian offensive achieves the success that, that many of us are hoping that they will achieve. Well, we've been watching very closely. General David Petraeus, always great to have you on and to have you lend your expertise. Thank you very much.